Hi, thanks for stopping by Fix Tinker Review Repeat. I'm Ken. Well, I have an anticipated project today. This is my LT1000 Craftsman Lawn Tractor, which I purchased back in 2003. And it's been running perfectly all these years. I maintain it, change the oil, etc. Well, it developed an over revving issue, and I think it's the governor. So let's take it apart, further diagnose the issue, and see if we can fix it. Craftsman LT1000 lawn tractor. It's been working perfectly for almost 18 years now. Uh, developed a problem the other day. It's been over revving, and uh, when I start it up now, it, uh, it, it the engine runs away and idles probably about uh, 5,000 RPM, and I shut it down immediately. It's very dangerous to over rev uh, a small engine like this, and it'll literally tear itself apart if you're allowed to, allowed to do that. So. The game plan is to uh, take the engine apart. I'm going to have to take it out of the tractor, uh, take the bottom, turn it over, and take the uh, the oil pan off, and then uh, further diagnose it. Which I think it's the governor. Uh, that's the uh, that's the issue. Uh, I've never changed one of these. Uh, I've never had it apart. I've taken uh, car engines apart, Volkswagens, uh, Chevy engines. But I've never taken a, uh, a small engine like a Kohler uh, apart. So, uh, as uh, many people do, they look on uh, YouTube and uh, see uh, others uh, that have done similar types of work on similar engines and uh, see if we can uh, uh, take it apart and then fix it. Uh, this is a, a Kohler a CV492S. Uh, it's, uh, the serial number indicates it was uh, manufactured in 2001. And unfortunately, it has the plastic governor gear uh, that uh, uh, seems to be uh, a common issue that the uh, gear either fails or the, uh, uh, the, the cap that uh, connects to the uh, governor rod uh, uh, pops off somehow, and then uh, there is no speed control on the engine. So anyway, let's, uh, let's take it apart and uh, see if we can further diagnose it. And then, uh, and then fix it so I can cut the grass. Well, the engine's out. It actually fought back a lot less than I thought it was going to. Uh, there are only four bolts holding the engine onto the chassis, and um, the exhaust manifold came off easy. Uh, the PTO and uh, drive pulley came off uh, quite easy. Uh, really, not uh, not too much of a problem. So uh, once everything was disconnected, uh, it took about 45 minutes to an hour to get everything unbolted. And uh, lift it off the uh, off the frame. So now I'm going to uh, take off the uh, the air cleaner and the oil filler spout, and then I'm going to put it on my workbench in the garage, um, inverted, so I can access the oil pan. Well, that was a little 
little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. It's a bit heavy, but it sits on the uh, on the top cover. It's stable, and uh, I'll be able to take off the uh, the oil pan here uh, fairly easily. Well, all in all, that wasn't terrible. Uh, the bottom pan, which is the oil pan, this is the bottom of the engine. The engine is upside down. Uh, it came off pretty easily, and just have to clean up the uh, the contact surface. Uh, there's some RTV. There's no gasket on this. Uh, the uh, sealing surface is uh, is uh, sealed with RTV. Now, what happened was this little pin. This is the governor pin. Had somehow fallen off. Now this pin sits right in here. And as the engine turns, the uh, flywheel will spread apart and will push up on the cross shaft. And this in turn, as you can see the mechanism is turn is moving this will help regulate the speed of the engine now somehow this little pin had fallen off God only knows how that happened uh, there is a little bit of play in the in the uh, in the gear but the gear is not worn and of course when it's upside down when the when the engine is right side up um, the gear will fit and mesh with the with this gear here uh, properly but for some reason this little pin had fallen off and it sits in there somehow right on that center shaft and uh, somehow this pin was uh, displaced and fallen off the uh, the center shaft so that's what happened I have uh, the center pin, a shaft, and the gear with the uh, fly, uh, the governor flywheel assembly uh, on order and that should come in a couple of days. I ordered the parts from e-replacement parts a few days ago so let's see what's inside and I forgot everything I need. Okay, here's the information for e replacement parts. Uh, they're not a paid endorser. Just uh, I've used them before and I've got had good uh, good service and uh, gotten the parts that I needed without any errors. Governor gear assembly. I bought a uh, manifold uh, gasket. I ordered a, um, a, sh a governor shaft. Now this is the vertical shaft uh, for the uh, for the governor gear, and I'm not sure whether this is going to be replaceable or not. And here's a uh, replacement uh, governor pin. This replaces the one that uh, that uh, popped off. And. Not sure I need this. The uh, a Kohler washer. <laughs> it was a, I think it was 99 cents. So um, and I don't know what I'm going to need that for, but it was in the diagram. So we'll see if there's one in there, and if I need to replace it. Okay, this gear assembly comes with the. Uh, flywheel inside. And I'm, I'm not going to show the uh, the part numbers because the part numbers will probably be different than what's in your track and you should always look up the part numbers uh, specifically for your model number. I think to take out the uh, gear I'm going to need to uh, loosen up the the cross shaft and of course I have to readjust the uh, the governor after I, I do this. OK, 
Okay. And this cross shaft actually has a, a small um, crimp in the uh, in the shaft to prevent it from sliding through, and it's connected on this side with a um, with a with a, a clip. So now, if I push this out of the way, we should be able to lift this right out. Okay. It looks okay. The gears actually are not too bad. There's a couple of uh, chewed up spots on the on the gear, but it doesn't look too bad. Let's see if I can get this shaft out easily. Now, this this shaft does not come out easily. So, anyway, let me uh, clean it off a pinch. A little dab of oil on it. Okay, a rookie mistake. I've never done this uh, this particular uh, jaw before. Looks like you have to put the pin in the assembly and close it up so it looks like that before you put it onto the shaft. And then it will snap down. Okay, and there you use your pin inside the shaft. Otherwise, it'll be impossible to get that shaft on. So, I had to remove this. Uh, it, sna it snaps out, but I would rather have not have uh, done that. So, you need to put the pin on the shaft first. Uh, I'm sorry, put the pin in the uh, governor assembly, uh, the flywheel, uh, before you put it onto the shaft. And then it uh, does slide down easily. And we can put this back. And as an initial adjustment, this should be all the way down. I guess these are uh, down. And this should be, I guess, all the way down. Okay, we'll tighten this up uh, just so we finished the uh, governor gear the governor assembly and the pin are all installed I have an initial adjustment so it's uh, down tight when the engine is in full throttle. So what's left to do is to clean off the uh, RTV from the uh, mating surfaces. I'm going to uh, clean out the uh, sump or the oil pan and I'm also going to remove the fluid from the uh, top of the engine before I reassemble it with the uh, top sider uh, pump. So let's put this thing back together. I'll uh, let the RTV set overnight. Um, I'm going to put it back together and hopefully install it back in the tractor tonight and then uh, tomorrow I'll fill it with oil and then we'll see if it runs. Well, this top sider uh, vacuum pump, I haven't used this in a long time. I'm going to use this to suck the uh, oil, residual oil, from inside the engine. It's sitting in uh, what's now the, uh, the top portion of the engine when it's inverted. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the top sider pump still works. 
I said I haven't used this in a lot of years. I did oil up the gaskets and the uh, pump assembly here. So let's see if it uh, if it sucks stuff out. Oh wow, there we go. Oh, well, success. It actually worked. <laughs> Haven't used that in uh, 10 years or so and that's uh, that's kind of nice. Okay, the uh, bottom cover went on fairly easily. There was a couple of uh, small speed bumps. Uh, the first is that the uh, the oil uh, oil pump has a, a notched shaft which has to be aligned with the uh, oil pump and uh, it'll go down about 95 percent of the way and then it'll stop. Don't force it. Uh, if it won't go down on its own and you check the position of the uh, oil uh, pump, uh, the internal uh, notch in the oil pump with the uh, shaft uh, notch they should align and if they don't align perfectly you're not going to get the uh, the cover together so what you're going to have to do is to take off these three uh, small bolts and uh, just align the shaft on the uh, uh, you know with the with the oil pump and it take uh, five minutes and just don't force it down uh, and be sure to put the uh, star gear back in exactly if you need to take it out put it in exactly as you took it out but other than that, it uh, went on fairly easily. Um, I think that was about it. I started the, uh, these 10, meter, 10 millimeter bolts um, by hand and then uh, just uh, snugged them down with a, uh, with a socket until they were um, moderately tight. I waited about an hour and then uh, uh, put them, uh, uh, set them the rest of the way. Unfortunately, I don't have my torque wrench with me uh, to uh, uh, to torque them down to the spec that's uh, specified in the uh, engine manual, but uh, so be it. <laughs> so just don't over tighten the uh, the oil uh, pump bolts, and uh, use a uh, a cross pattern when you tighten up the bolts. You know, snug them down here, snug it down here. Snug it down here, snug it down here, just uh, alternate uh, sides uh, and go a little bit at a time so you don't uh, warp the, uh, the aluminum case. So other than that, uh, it went, went together fairly easily and I'm going to wait 24 hours uh, to uh, fill it with oil, but I am going to put it back in the, uh, on the tractor uh, now. I'm just not going uh, to fill it. I'm going to leave it dry until tomorrow. Well, it's a beautiful spring morning, and I let the uh, Permatex RTV gasket maker set overnight. I just have to connect the fuel line, put the muffler back in, and uh, oil filter, fill it with some, uh, some oil, and we should be good to go. So let's get started and uh, see if this thing will, will run. I'm going to use a new gasket that I ordered uh, for the exhaust manifold. Uh, it's two uh, uh, 13 millimeter or one and a half inch uh, nuts holding it on underneath. Uh, I can slip it in uh, from the bottom. Just uh, got to uh, move up the uh, uh, the skid plate here, and then uh, should bolt right on. I got to say, I've taken off a number of mufflers and exhaust manifolds over the years, and uh, by far, this is the easiest. <laughs> there was uh, virtually no rust. Uh, the uh, the bolts are fairly easy to get at. So uh, went on. It came off and went on uh, very, very easily. So very pleased with the uh, design of this. Now, like I tell my uh, my son and my grandson, um, you know your. Uh, you know, you're at least an amateur mechanic when the tips of your fingers, and you can feel the nuts and bolts going in uh, correctly. You know, sort of have like a, a sixth sense. <laughs> when you can't see the part, you can actually uh, get it uh, seated and 
and connected without looking at it. Okay, next is the oil filter. I got a new oil filter uh, that I was going to put in before this this uh, this project. This is original equipment uh, Kohler. And I like to put a little bit of uh, oil on the gasket. Make sure the uh, mating surface is clean. There's no particles and other stuff down in the uh, in the little uh, sump there. This just needs to be hand tight plus about a quarter of a turn and it should seat just fine. Okay, I think next is the um, is the fuel line. I did install a, a fuel shut off here to uh, avoid having to connect every disconnect everything and plug up the line. Now I can just uh, disconnect it and shut it off here with this disconnect. I want to check this one to make sure this is tight. These just have to be fairly snug. Don't over tighten them. Is, uh, you squish the, uh, the hose and possibly damage it. Okay. I'll wait to, to, uh, to turn the, uh, the fuel on until we're ready to start the engine. One thing I want to point out is I did disconnect uh, the uh, the solenoid here on the bottom of the carburetor which shuts the fuel flow when the engine is turned off. It gave nothing but problems over the years and once disconnected <laughs> uh, it uh, solved some of the uh, I had some uh, uh, fuel problems with that. There was a little uh, rubber plunger on the end of the of the uh, the rod that that shuts the uh, the fuel off and that fell off over the years a couple of times so I just decided to snip off the uh, the shaft of the solenoid and disconnect it and the wire is up over here uh, taped up okay I bet you thought I was gonna forget to put oil in <laughs> no I didn't forget uh, this tractor holds about two quarts I'm gonna use uh, the Walmart uh, Supertech uh, full synthetic uh, 10W30. The oil pan and the, uh, well, the sump and the uh, the engine were fairly sludge free, which uh, shows that if you change your oil, uh, you really don't have uh, buildup in your engine and keeps the engine uh, nice and clean. Okay, well, I got the oil in, um, and it's probably a little bit slightly overfilled. It would slightly over the uh, over the mark and that will uh, account for the oil filter so it takes uh, exactly two quarts. What I'm going to do before I start the engine I'm going to take the spark plug out and uh, turn over a couple of times just to, if there's any oil that's in the cylinder I want to shoot that out so we prevent uh, hydro lock. Uh, I'm not sure if I got oil in the uh, cylinder when it was inverted so I'm going to just do that as a uh, as a precaution before I uh, reconnect the battery and try to start it up. Oh, okay, got the spark plug out. Looks like we're about uh, ready for a new spark plug. I'll change that when I get around to it. Okay, I'm going to give it a couple of uh, just a couple of cranks to purge out any oil in the uh, cylinder. I got the battery connected. We have oil, gas. Uh, gas is off. I don't want it to. Uh, flow into the carburetor just yet. Okay, well she spins and that's a good sign. So let me put the uh, spark plug back in. We'll turn up, uh, turn on the gas and we'll uh, see if she cranks up. Well, she's all back together. Uh, 
got the battery connected. I'm going to uh, put the uh, the gas on. We have oil, and uh, looks like we're all set. I got all the connections in. So let's uh, crank her up and see if she starts. Good when uh, when the project turns out uh, and, it, and, it, and, it, and the uh, the engine runs afterwards. Well, that project one is about as good as I could ever expect. <laughs> when you start the engine and it, uh, it actually turns over uh, right away and runs, that's a good thing. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making the video, and as happy as I am uh, that the that the Dawn thing is uh, is running uh, well now. Uh, special thanks to all of the uh, excellent YouTube videos uh, that have been posted on this and uh, very similar subjects on how to fix the governor gear. Um, it was an old video by Sawbones uh, about eight years ago that, uh, not the best quality video, but uh, he knew his stuff and he did a nice job and uh, it helped me out tremendously on this video. I'd also like to thank uh, Musty One, Tarot Fixes All, uh, Steve's Small Engine Saloon, uh, South Main uh, Auto. Uh, there's uh, many, many other channels that uh, have excellent uh, DIY information. So I hope this channel is uh, helping you out. Uh, each video you watch, you glean a little bit more information, and it uh, makes you a little bit smarter, a little bit wiser, and uh, able to do your own projects rather than spending $500 or $1,000 to have somebody else do it for you. So get your hands dirty. Go ahead and fix uh, what you can fix and tinker what you can tinker with. This is Fix, Tinker, Review, Repeat. I'm Ken, and I hope all your projects go well. Uh -huh.